Hello? Yo, Jay, did you just see Mike Wing's tweets he just put out, bro? No, what do you say? Bro, he put out so much stuff about 2K21. Bro, you gotta check it out. Drop a banger for it, bro. Come on. Oh, what? Yes, bro. Go check that stuff out. So it's like, it's not like just some BS. It's like he posted like some game-changing tweets. Bro, I'm telling you these are the best little hints on 2K21 we're going to get so far. I'm telling you right now, bro. Oh, man. It's that good? It's that good. Oh, man. All right. I'm about to get right on it. Thank you for letting me know, man. Anytime, bro. Give us that banger. Yes, sir. You heard the man, Mike Wang, coming in hot with the 2K21 news and updates. You don't want to miss it. So if you're not familiar with Mike Wang, he is the gameplay director for NBA 2K. So all the gameplay mechanics, he basically has control over. He's in charge of it. Another thing you need to know about Mike Wang is during 2K's life cycle, throughout the year, he doesn't really tweet unless like a major patch is coming and he will provide us with the updates, you know, if 2K you know, wants to give us some patch notes, which, you know, they don't always do. But during the 2K off season, during the summer, like August, this is usually about that time where Mike Wang comes back from the dead and hits us with the 2K news. So without further ado, we're going to get right into it. But first, I am streaming on Twitch now. So make sure you hit me with a follow link down below. Also, if you are not subscribed, Make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on post bell notifications. We are on the road to not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, but 6k. So make sure you hit that sub button and turn on the post bell notifications, like I said, so you don't miss an upload. So there is a lot of tweets that Mike Wang posted. And he even interacted with a lot of the 2K fans. And I'm going to cover as much as I can. I might not cover every single tweet because, you know, we don't want this to be too long of a video. So here's the first thing that he said earlier. He said the key to making lineups with the Pro Stick this year equals instead of holding the right stick to the left or right, hold it in the direction you want for a brief moment and then quickly rotate it towards 12 o'clock to find the ideal aim point. I'm not going to lie to y'all. I mean, I'm going to need someone smart to, you know, explain this to me in the comments because it sounds really complicated. I'm actually going to have to go to the 2K EU tips or whatever the hell it's called to, you know, get an idea of how this works because this sounds pretty damn confusing to me. So does this mean that we're going to be missing a bunch of wide open layups? I mean, wide open layups should go in regardless. Now, any type of contest, sure, there should be some kind of skill to it. There needs to be a skill gap with finishing. No more very early 20% covers. No more late 65% covers going in. And most importantly, no more missed time smothered going in. Also, we need the option to have no shot meter on jump shots and shot meter on the laps. I mean, timing a layup with the shot meter off in 2K20 is so complicated. And I don't know, I feel like you gotta get lucky to green a layup without the shot meter. I mean, I actually went into the pro arena and tried to time layups and I keep getting solid, 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 and I feel like the green is just like whenever the RNG wants to allow me to green a layup. I don't know about you guys. So there was a reply. How will the new shot stick affect post play? Is the mechanic the same as layups with the brief then rotate? Very good grammar on this guy's part, by the way. Like, you can tell that he is easing his English classes. Like, he got the dashes and everything. Like, that's OD on Twitter. But, Mike Wang said, Yeah, let's say your sh I'm not going to read that whole example. I'm going to let y'all read that for yourselves. But the whole point is, post-scoring is going to be the same as layups with the 12 o'clock, the, the clock thing. But, does this mean we're going to get a skill gap with post-scoring for the first time ever? That would be amazing. No more early smothered going in. That is music to my ears. No more invalid post score. No more no skill post scores. Does it mean post scoring is actually going to be a skill this year? That is something we desperately need in 2K pretty much forever. So I am very happy to hear this. And there's another reply. How about if you use the square button in Xbox's case, the X button? And Mike said, 
Shaban will work pretty similarly to 2K20, though a lot of retuning has been done. Okay, so we can still use the X or square button for layups, and he said the time will be the same as 2K20, so it actually sounds like using the stick will actually be a lot smarter because just holding square or X, whatever console you're on, I mean, it's kind of RNG with the timing. I'm not going to lie to y'all. And this person said, how about dunking with the pro stick? How will that work? And Mike said, dunking is the same as 20. All right, so let's say I'm going for a dunk, and then it makes me do a layup, and I got to suddenly time that layup. That's going to cause a lot of misses because there are so many times where you should get a dunk, and it just gives you a slow, weak layup, and that can make you miss now, apparently, and it also can get you blocked, like always, like every other year. So it sounds like dunking might actually be very RNG. 2K needs to get it to where if you have a clear path to dunk, nobody there, you should dunk the ball, especially if you're capable of dunking and you didn't use that much stamina. I don't know, hopefully this stick timing is a good thing. I mean, remember in the last video I talked about how aiming the pro stick at the basket from 2K17 is going to be back? I mean, hopefully it all works this year. I've always hated stick shooting. I've always wanted to be just for dunks and layups. But, like I said, maybe it'll actually work or it's going to be trash and 2K will just scrap it like they did in 2K17. Okay, so scrap what I said about the wide open layups. This person said, so you think it should be this way for wide open layups, fast breaks too. I don't agree. It's a layup, not a jump shot. And you know what? I agree. If it's wide open in a layup, you should just be able to make it. That would just be so game breaking. Especially if you have a game winning fast break layup and you just blow because of this dumb shit. I don't know. But Mike did say, I've gone back and forth on this, but settle on wide open. You can basically ignore the timing and aiming and still hit. Alright, that's good. But he said you can, meaning it's optional. And it seems like it's not guaranteed. But if it's wide open, then hopefully it just goes in. No wide open miss layups, please Mike. Please, I beg of you. So here's another interesting tweet. So this guy is talking about how bad contests should be punished. And Mike said there are more jump shooting fouls when you make contact with the shooter on bad slash weak contests this year. I don't know how I feel about this. I mean, yes, there are jump shooting fouls in real life. But at the same time, I don't know how to feel about this. Like, there's no way to explain it. It's just going to be tough, especially for pro and league players, rec players. You got to be careful how you contest shooters this year, I guess. And I... Is this going to open the window for shooters to shoot bad shots because they know that there's a good chance they'll get fouled? I mean, NBA players do this all the time, man. You know, Harden especially. And, you know, it's an art in real life playing a video game. I don't know. I'm going to let y'all debate that if you choose. Another interesting one is, will Quick Straw still be out on Next Gen 2? And Mike Mike said, yes, it's gone forever. Hooray! It's never coming back. I mean, the main problem that I have with quick draw is it was just impossible to shoot in my career at first. And getting shooting badges was way too grindy at first because of having to get quick draw. So, yeah. As far as the park, I mean, it is what it is for the park. I didn't really care. It just sucked having to grind shooting badges before getting quick draw. That's all. So, there was a whole thread with this guy, Crossfire 2K, Mike went, and Laker fan was going off about non-three-point shooters being able to shoot. And Mike Wang said, the goal is for you to have to be at least in the mid to high 70s to be a decent threat. If people are consistently hitting threes as a 51, I'll make a hot fix. So us 2K16 players, we know hot fixes very well. Mike Wang used to patch shooting every other day without telling us. And <laughs> It was great, man. Let me tell you, we just loved it. But I will say this, Mr. Wang. Thank you. This is what we've all wanted to hear. That these non-shooting inside builds, being able to shoot threes, there's no way it justified. And of course, there are going to be those brain-dead wannabe stage players that go, it's a skill gap. But it's not a skill gap. It's just... BS. I mean, if I practice enough, I would be able to green threes on a 53 point or lower with practice. I mean, anyone can do it. I know people that suck at this game and they're capable of greening with a 46 3. I mean, come on. Another thing is 
perhaps floor general needs to be removed because it just opens things up for these builds to be able to speed boost and shoot better than they're supposed to. I mean, floor general can break the game a little bit. So let me know what you think about that. And I didn't like the idea of Dimer helping the lower the rating of the shooter, the better. It should be the other way around. Like, just because Chris Paul passes a pass to... Passes a pass. Yeah, passes the ball to DeAndre Jordan. Does that mean DeAndre Jordan is going to shoot it and make it just because Chris Paul passed him? No, that's not how it works in real life. I mean, yeah, there are guys that make their teammates better, but Dimer shouldn't be a miracle worker, you know? So... You know, I just wanted to put my two cents on that. But, Mike, if you are not captain, that is a W. Inside should not be able to shoot. I don't care about Dimer. I don't care about Floor General. I don't care about none of that. It's not a skill gap. It is BS. And if you disagree with me, then you're an old head. And I mean the type of old heads that try to ruin 2K. I mean, I'm not saying if you're an old head, then you're automatically a cancer in 2K. I'm not like these other guys. But there are a lot of old heads that just, I swear to God, they just want to ruin the game. And they give old heads a bad name. So yeah, if you think inside you make threes, you're an old head. I don't care if you're 12, you're an old head. That's just how I see it. Now here's something that's a little concerning. Back to the layup timing. Laker fan said, I'm sure you can hold X for wide opens and be fine, as you should. But also, keep in mind, pro players are pro players because they are good. I think being good at layups, semi-contested should be a skill, just like shooting is. Alright, so Mike Wang said, exactly what I was going for here. Creating a skill gap for slashers, which is something we desperately need, because anyone can just be a slasher on 2K20. I mean, there's no skill in that. If you master pro stick layups, you'll have a much better chance at finishing at the rim, contested and through contact. Now, this can be a little concerned, because how contested? I mean... There's a certain amount of percentage to where you can green on a jump shot. I think the most you can green without takeover or steady shoot or whatever is like 64%. Something like that. So, layups. How contested do you got to be to not be able to green? One is the green window close for layups. Is it 75%, 65%, 80%? Like, we need something on this, Mike. And, you know, if people can just go in with brain dead layups the whole time in green... I mean, I don't know. What do you guys think about that? So, Mike Wang must have just been in the mood to get W's from the 2K community. And it's going to work right here. Listen to this. Is Pogo Stick removed? He said, Pogo Stick is still in the game. But, it was nerfed. W or is it a V? Because, you know, Pogo Stick should be removed. But, hopefully it is nerfed real good. Because Pogo Stick is OP. And you could be absolutely brain dead on defense and still make plays because of Pogo Stick. But big time W for nerfing it nonetheless. Thank you, Mike Wang. The last thing I want to address is the jump shot creator isn't gated behind a workout anymore. It's available off rip W. Big time W, Mr. Wang. So now we don't have to play my career for the jump shot creator, which is great for people that don't want to play my career. Although, we're probably going to play some of my career for the sake of getting badges off rip. But, the fact that we don't have to go into my career for the jump shot creator, it makes my career a little less grindy. And that is always great to hear. If it comes to my career being less grindy, that is big time news for the 2k community that likes to play online. And not my career such as Bar, Rack, Pro-Am, Stage, etc. So obviously, there was a lot of news to cover. If you don't know Mike Lang's Twitter, it's at Baluba. So I recommend you hit him with a follow for the rare occasion that he does decide to tweet. He might even tweet more stuff by the time I post this video, just like yesterday's video, which I recommend checking out. You know, anytime there's 2K21 news, I will cover it. So here are some videos on the end screen regarding NBA 2K21. I recommend clicking one of them. And if you haven't hit that subscribe button, what are you doing? Hit that subscribe button. Turn on post bell notifications so you don't miss an upload. I got an itch on my neck. But, till next time, I am out. Peace!